What's up guys, this is Clint Coulter, and today I'm gonna take you through a little bag tour. And this is submission from Clay Anderson. You know, he had a good idea to do a tour through my bag and uh, tell you some of the stuff that I got in here. And being a guy who plays multiple positions, I got a bunch of different tools in here. So uh, let's go in. I don't really know, I didn't really plan. So could be some surprises in here, we'll see. So let's go to the gloves first. So here's a A2000 catcher's glove. And what I really like about this one is it has the thumb guard built in. So being a catcher, you know, you're gonna get thumbed eventually. That's just the name of the game. And, you know, catch a two seamer wrong, get it caught back in here and that thumb blows up on you. This is a really good glove that I'll probably use when that happens, cause you know it's gonna. And then this is kind of more my everyday one. So this is the Buster Posey model. This is a Rawlings and it's got the mesh on the back and it's really light, but it also has got the, the black leather is really durable. This black, uh, I think it's Japanese leather in here and it's the heart of the hide, and this leather is very, very durable. So I really like this, good for transfers, but also really good for receiving too. And then my first base glove is a Wilson A2000. And this is my outfield glove. I use a 13 inch and H-Web, and I believe it's the same glove Harper uses. It's a Pro S303, 13 inch. And I got a couple different colors of this, but this one I brought, this is a, this is a Pro Preferred, so. I got a couple hard of the hides too. I like the Pro Preferred for the outfield gloves because you don't really beat them up as much. And I think that leather gets a little more soft, so they last pretty good in the outfield. But for the catcher's gloves, I use a lot of the hard of the hides because I think they are they start a little firmer so you can keep them firm. And I like to keep my catcher's gloves pretty firm. You know, they start getting floppy and stuff. Uh, it, it's hard to make those transfers because the ball kind of moves around in there. You kind of want it to be really hard so you can deflect that ball into your throwing hand quickly. And this is kind of my staple. So as an outfielder, and I'm sure infielders use this too, but mostly in the outfield, I take this and go out for BP, and that's where you get your work in. As an outfielder, you go out to BP and you're, you're getting breaks and reads. And the, the importance of this is this really makes you focus. Having this little tiny glove, you know, you get a high fly ball, you gotta really focus or that thing's gonna hit you in the face. And also what I like about it too is, even if you miss pitch or balls in the outfield, uh, getting your work in, it doesn't matter. You got a four inch glove on, you know, this thing's tinier. It's, it's nine and a half inch, but it feels like four inches. Um, and that's the name of the game. When you're getting your work in, wor uh, worry more so about your drop steps and getting to the ball and don't worry about catching it. You put that 13 inch, you put this 13 inch thing on compared to that, once you get in the game, catching it's gonna be easy. So worry about your footwork, put this on and just get to those balls. But challenge yourself, see how far you can get back on balls and you'll surprise yourself. You'll be like, I had no shot of getting to that. And you'll start breaking for them like, wow, I got way closer than I thought. So that's how you uh, challenge yourself in practice and uh, ch uh, challenge your range. So let's go, to, uh, let's go to the sunglasses here. So I got three different sunglasses I usually bring each season. So this is my lighter pair. So this one, it's kind of more like every day I'll wear these. So this is, they're all Oakley's. This is my camo pair. This honestly is probably more like a DH day probably. Cause these are, these are uh, more so my babies. I really like these ones. I don't beat them up too bad. They're not like my everyday wear, but if I'm feeling them, I'll throw them on. Then my two other pairs more so have a purpose. So this pair here, let's see which one it is. So it's my dark pair. So these ones are really dark polarized Oakleys. And these ones are for really, really bright days. So really hot summer days, sunny days. I'll wear these ones because they block out the sun really well. And then my last pair is the exact opposite. So these ones are more like every day if it's not like crazy, crazy bright. So like day games, I'll wear those dark ones for sure. But this will be even the start of night games where it's those first few innings are uh, sun setting, it's still kind of bright. These red lenses are really good for overcast too. So these are more like my everyday wear. And they're red, which really, brightens it up when uh, it's the cloud goes over the sun, but also you still get that polarization when the sun's uh, in your face. Um, spikes, I got laces in these spikes, so some spare laces, but these are just molds. Uh, I wear orthotics because my feet are, uh, sometimes are sensitive to spikes. You know, that's just how it is when you're playing a hundred and some games every year, uh, your feet, and sometimes you get shin splints and stuff. So I'll wear a custom, uh, insoles so the the cleats don't matter to me too much uh well because i'll throw those insoles in and they all kind of feel the same so i got different brands this one's new balance i think the other two are under armor so here's some these are these ones are metal spikes those are uh, plastic spikes and these are the under armor ones that are kind of both you got the metal tips with the uh, plastic so i like these for catching 
because the plastic ones you can slip on home sometimes. So those ones will be more so for like outfield or DH day. These ones I catch a lot in, then obviously the metal ones are good for whatever. So the metal ones will be if, especially if it's like a slippery environment where I really want to make sure I have traction, I'll throw the spikes on. Um, shower shoes, pretty self-explanatory. Um, I'll just take the clothes out for now. So this is just uh, leggings, you know, sliding shorts, undershirts, all the that good stuff. Um, these are really important. So especially for sliding, these obviously are going to protect your knees, but you throw these on. And, but also in your shin guards as a catcher, those pads aren't very, very thick. And if you're blocking and catching, especially being an everyday catcher, these are gonna be your, your best friend. You know, I went from never wearing these and I'd have bruises, you know, especially if you're doing blocking drills and stuff in practice, you're gonna have bruises all inside your knee. You throw these on, you're gonna get the same work in. This is just gonna really protect you. So you gotta take care of your knees over the longevity of your career. So throw these on whenever you can. Those, I wear those every day. And no matter even if I'm playing the outfield, I'll, I'll throw it, especially for the right leg because I slide on my right knee a lot. I'll throw the right one on at least. So here's some more protection. This is elbow guard, shin guard. Um, and this is the most important protection, the cup and the jock strap. You all know that's... And what kids need to do too is, and parents, especially young kids, you need to teach them how to put this on because so many. I've heard so many stories where kids are especially those uh, cups that you put into your sliding shorts. Like here, here's like your sliding shorts, this little uh, sleeve, that thing is not good because that thing can pinch you and you can get really hurt. So you need to go underwear, then jock, then you can put sliding shorts or tights on top of that, but don't go t underwear tights and then the jock either because that's not uh, safe either. So you guys need to make sure you're putting that on right. Um, this is really important, especially as a catcher. This is called the So Right. They sent, they sent me this. And th what this does is you lay on it flat on your belly and you put this underneath and you kind of move around and massage in your psoas and iliacus here in your hips. And as a catcher, this is super important because, you know, obviously you're on bus trips too. Even if not a catcher, this is a really good tool that you can put in your bag. And I bring this on every road trip. You know, I have this at the field every day. I, I even bring it home. I'll come home and before I go to bed. And that's a big thing. As a baseball player, if you go to bed tight, you're gonna wake up tight. And, you know, so I really try to do this. I'll foam roll, you know, tiger tail or rub out your uh, legs and stuff. And go to bed loose, wake up loose, and then get rolling, you know? So that's kind of part of my routine is I always bring that. Some batting gloves. Got some broken in ones, got some, some new ones. Socks. I'm a big ankle sock guy. I really like ankle socks. I know some people call me crazy because they think you're gonna get dirt in there, but it's like if you get dirt in your shoe anyway, you're gonna take your shoe off and take it off. And you, I wear pants down, so it pretty much blocks it. So ankle socks, just any way to keep me cooler. If it's a hot day, I'm definitely wearing ankle socks. Colder, obviously, I don't care, but uh, razors. Uh, I just have a bunch of miscellaneous stuff like that, powder. Because sometimes, you know, you go to a field and their clubby isn't the best or whatever. Or he doesn't have, he's got to go to the store and doesn't have stuff. And especially being a catcher, you try to have everything. If someone needs something like baseball, you need a baseball catcher, go to a catcher's bag. He's probably got some in there. So tape, same thing, tape. It's always ready to go. Got to tape up fingers. You start bleeding, just throw some tape on there, rub some dirt on it, and keep rolling. That's it. As a catcher, you got to be pretty tough. You got to be ready to go. Here's pine tar. So here's just a stick of, a stick of a tar. Soap, deodorant. And I try to keep everything natural, like even my powders natural. You know, whenever you're using something every day, try to keep it organic natural, uh, especially with the powder. You know, there's been studies about the talcum powder causing cancer and stuff. And I don't know exactly, but when in doubt, try to be more natural, especially if you're using it every day, you know. Uh, laundry loops, got some laundry loops. Those are always handy to have because if you go to another field too and you lose your loop, it's good to have some extra ones throw your name on it and keep going. Uh, leather belt is a catcher. Sometimes I'll wear it, sometimes I won't. Uh, if it's hot, I do because why you don't wear a leather belt as a catcher is because when you bend down, the leather doesn't conform to your body. So you end up having the plumber's crack sometimes because the belt pulls your pants down. So if it's a hot day, the belt kind of loosens up and stays tight to you. But if it's really cold, I'll probably go to a, just an elastic belt, like, you know, the little league belts because, and a lot of big leaguers will wear those elastic belts just for that same reason. So um that's about it i got here's a pad so i don't really like wearing wrist pads 
uh, they just get more sweaty and stuff and I don't really think they protect you, a lot of them. So what I end up doing is just taking some foam and taking a piece of plastic. And when I tape up my wrist, I'll just throw this under the tape, tape it up. And you know, this is, you look at any big league catcher, they're all wearing something on their left wrist. And just throughout your whole career, if you're just pounding and pounding that form with, with balls, that scar tissue in your wrist will start blowing up. You know, after a while, your you're just tissue can't handle it. And like right now, if I get a ball really hard without a pad in there, that thing like puffs out, you know, a good inch. Like it gets really, really swollen. So pretty much every good catcher has something on their, their left wrist. And if you don't trust me, uh, go look at TV. They definitely, they definitely do. So I think the last thing I got in here that's worth showing, I got some junk, <laughs> I need to clean it out. Uh, is my bat. So I like to use Yellow Birch, this is a B45, but I've used a bunch of different brands. Um, and this is a 271L. So I actually uh, started using this in the Arizona Fall League is when Corey Seager was using it and I picked it up and it felt pretty good. So I ordered one and I've used the same thing pretty much since. And this is a 33 and three quarters, 32 and a quarter. So that's a pretty weird dimension. But you know, the 34, I kind of felt like I'd get long with. And if it's super light, I'll break them. And also it doesn't feel quite as balanced. If it's super light, it feels a little more top heavy to me. So it gets a little, uh, and that's why I like the L. So 271s are thinner, 271Ls are a little thicker. So I think it's 271 large. So it's a little thicker all the way throughout, just pretty uniform. And it just feels pretty balanced to me. And that's, that's what it's about. Just find, finding what feels balanced to you and where you can feel that barrel. Like where's the sweet spot and where can you maximize getting this to the zone? So like I've used bigger barrel bats too, and one, I break them a ton. You know, just being a bigger, stronger guy, it's easier to break big barrel bats. You catch them off the end wrong and the thing just snaps. Um, but also they feel really top heavy, you know, and I feel like I lose the barrel. I don't really know where it is. And I roll over a lot because it's way out there. This, it feels like the barrel's closer to my hands and I can just throw my hands and the barrel's gonna be right there with them. So that's pretty much it for the bag tour, guys. You know, I'll have to get a little more organized on the repacking of it. But yeah, I uh, get my coronavirus results back, so the season hasn't even started. That's why I don't have catcher's gear in here. Um, but yeah, so fingers crossed that goes smoothly and we can get back to baseball. But thanks again to Clay Anderson for submitting the idea, and it was a pretty cool idea. And you guys let me know what other ideas you uh, want to see. I'm going to get uh, into doing defensive work here soon. And once we get back to baseball, we'll have a bunch of different stuff. We'll do some outfield catcher, you know, we'll get back into hitting, doing some stuff and send me videos of what you guys want to want to see and some videos of you guys working. Let me see what you guys got and uh, I'll throw any pointers out there if uh, you can. So hit me up on Twitter, cculture 12 and uh, or any other of my social media accounts and let me know, email me. Uh, and yeah, appreciate it. Shoot me a subscription if you would and uh, we'll see you next time.